Hi, this is Dr. Ben Finio here along with LEGO Space Guy and Elmo bringing you yet another Zoom tutorial with an update about what gets recorded in Zoom. You should see two things on your screen right now. Over on your left, you are seeing a live screen recording of my actual desktop in Windows. This is done using a third-party screen recorder, so it is capturing the entire desktop, including things like the Windows taskbar. Over on your right, you see the resulting local recording from Zoom. So as I go through this video, you can compare what I see in real time on the left and the resulting recording on the right. I made a video similar to this sometime last year, but Zoom has released a bunch of new features since then, and there are just so many different possible combinations of views in Zoom that it was impossible to cover all of them in that video. So what I'm going to do in this video is just iterate through as many view configurations as I can think of, and then at any point in the video, you can look at that configuration and see the resulting recording over on the right. Two caveats, this is for a local recording, not a cloud recording. So if you're doing a cloud recording, there might be some slight differences. If I have time, I will make another video about that. And I am doing this on a single monitor. So if you have dual monitor mode enabled, that kind of messes up all sorts of recording things. I have a separate video about that linked in the description below this one. All right, let's get started and just start testing what affects the recording. So right now I am in gallery view. One of the new features Zoom released last year is that you can click and drag to rearrange people in gallery view. So for example, let's see what happens if I swap Elmo with Lego Space Guy and wow, it decided to move me around there too. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of move people all over the place here. And then I believe at some point you can go up to view and say release video order and it'll put everybody back in the automatic order. So let's see if that rearranging affected the recording at all. Next, you can pin and spotlight people. Last year, Zoom released a new feature where you can pin multiple people or spotlight multiple people at once. And lots of people have asked in the comments what happens if you have multiple people spotlighted. So first, let's try pinning one person. I'm going to pin Lego Space Guy, and you can see that switched me to speaker view as opposed to gallery view. I'm also going to go ahead and pin Elmo at the same time. So I have a little add pin option here. So we'll have to see if in the recording, if it winds up recording both of these or doing something else. Now let's go ahead and test spotlighting, which is different from pinning. So I have a video about this. Pinning just pins the videos for you. Spotlighting is a feature available to hosts and co-hosts that will spotlight the video for everyone in the meeting. So to test that, I'm going to go ahead and remove these pins, remove pin, switch back to gallery view just for the heck of it to see what happens. And now let's spotlight Lego Space Guy and then go ahead and add spotlight for Elmo. So now both of them are spotlighted. We should see over on the right what happens in the recording for that. Okay, so let's remove those spotlights. I'm gonna right click Elmo, select remove spotlight. And then this is a little annoying. I can't actually right click Lego Space Guy to remove the spotlight. I have to go up here to the remove spotlight button. I don't know if it will let me mix and match pinning and spotlighting. Let's find out. I'm gonna switch back to gallery view and I am going to pin Lego Space Guy and see if it'll let me spotlight Elmo. Okay, and then it does give me a prompt that if you spotlight someone, it's going to remove all pinned videos. So now I only have Elmo spotlighted. So I believe I have now iterated through all possible combinations of pinning and spotlighting there. I guess technically I could also do one of these to myself. So I'm going to add spotlight to me. So again, I think that covers a bunch of different combinations of pinning and spotlighting. Let's go back to gallery view here. I'm gonna remove all spotlights. Now next, let's test screen sharing. This is something that comes up very frequently. What happens when you are sharing your screen or somebody else is sharing their screen? What gets recorded? So I'm gonna go ahead and click share screen. I have entire videos about this, so I'm not gonna go over it in a lot of detail here, but say I'm just gonna share my PowerPoint presentation, click share. Now other people can see my PowerPoint presentation and you'll notice two things. I have this toolbar that collapses now to make it easier to see what I'm sharing so I can drag this around the screen. And if you're not using dual monitor mode, you also get this little floating window with up to, I think, four participant thumbnails in it. So this won't show everybody. And you can drag this around and you can also either minimize this completely or just show one person or click this to expand it and show four people. So 
Not quite sure how that's going to affect the recording as I move this around or cycle through these. Look at the right side of your screen to see what's happening. Now, people have also asked what happens if you're sharing your screen and pinning or spotlighting somebody. So let's try that. For example, I am going to pin myself. And then if I switch to this single active speaker view here, you should see the person who's pinned here. So for example, if I, what happens if I add pin? So if I switch to, okay, now that I've, it still just shows one person if I go down to this single active speaker view, but if I'm in the multiple thumbnails, it's going to show the two pinned people here. Not sure if it's going to show both of us in the recording or still just show me up here at the top. Let's go ahead and remove those pins and try the same thing with Spotlight. So for example, I am going to Spotlight myself for everyone and then go ahead and also Spotlight Elmo for everyone. So I've added two people to Spotlight and I'm going to cycle through the view options here. I'm in where I can see everybody now. I'm gonna to go to single active speaker where, okay, that time it decided to just show Elmo instead of me. So that's a little different than what it did with the pinning. Elmo's number two in the order here, but it decided to show him. And then I can also minimize that entire thing. So again, I believe I have cycled through all of the different options there where I am sharing my own screen. I've moved this window around. I've toggled through minimizing active speaker and everyone and different options for pinning and spotlighting there. So take a look over on the right as you watch that and see what actually shows up in the recording. Now, people also have similar questions about what happens when somebody else is sharing their screen if you are recording. So I have another laptop sitting next to me here. I am going to go ahead and share the screen from that if you give me one second. So share screen, oh, host disabled participant screen sharing. So as usual, if you run into that problem, you have to go to your advanced sharing options. Who can share all participants? Okay, now my laptop should be able to share the screen. Share screen, I'm going to, there we go. Laptop has started screen sharing. Now, you'll see that my Zoom automatically jumped into full screen there. So it says you are viewing laptop screen. So this looks similar to what it was like when I was sharing my own screen, but I'm not the one doing the screen sharing now. And again, I have this window that I can drag around. I can minimize it. I can do active speaker, I can show four thumbnails, and I can still pin and spotlight people as the host. So again, let's just kind of cycle through all of those. I'm going to pin myself. Oh, I had somebody else spotlighted. I gotta remove the spotlights first. I had forgotten to do that. Oh God. Okay, so pinning somebody made it automatically swap these videos. So there's also this swap shared screen with video button here. So I have no idea what that's gonna to do to the recording. Again, look over on the right to see what it wound up doing. I'm gonna swap those back, which did not remove the pin. So again, let's try and cycle through here. Minimize, single active speaker, bunch of thumbnails, and let's try a multi-pin. We're gonna give Lego Space Guy some stage time. So let's add a pin there. Oh, wow. I don't even know what just happened. It minimized my zoom entirely. Didn't expect that. Okay, so now on my own desktop, I'm just seeing my PowerPoint that I have on this computer. I don't even know where Zoom went. Give me Zoom back. Okay, so now it switched it. So I have double pin here myself and Lego Space Guy. And again, it kind of automatically swapped. So the PowerPoint is tiny here. If I go back, then it's got me and Lego Space Guy pinned here. So let's remove those pins and try the same thing with spotlighting. And maybe none of this matters. I, you know, the recording might still just be showing the um, shared screen large. I won't know until I stop this recording and look at what actually got recorded. Let's try Spotlight again. This time I'm gonna spotlight Elmo and also spotlight Lego Space Guy. So interesting, when I added the spotlight there, it didn't flip out and swap this automatically. It only did that when I pinned. So let's try that again. I'm gonna pin myself. It'll give me that warning about removing spotlights. And then it automatically swapped so that the video is large and the shared screen is small. Again, I can reverse that by clicking the swap shared screen button. Now, this entire time I have been in full screen mode, I can exit that by going up here to view options and selecting exit full screen. So right now I'm in this mode where I have the shared content here and the participants in thumbnails up across the top. And again, I can cycle through pinning and spotlighting multiple people. So let's say I'm going to Pin Lego Space Guy. How about remove all pins? Because I've lost track of who I have pinned. Remove all pins. 
Okay, wow. Now, yeah. Now, it's possible to get so deep in the different iterations of the views here that this just gets really confusing. So now, in, in my live view, I have lost the other people, possibly because I'm in speaker view. I'm in standard side-by-side -side speaker, side-by-side -side gallery. Okay, I have no idea where everybody else went. Let's try and get everybody else back. Side-by-side -side gallery. There we go. But what if I go back to standard view... Okay, now everybody else is back at the top. So I don't know what I did to lose everybody else at the top there, but you can see why people get kind of frustrated with this. Zoom is highly customizable, but once you get kind of lost in manually rearranging the views, it can be hard to get back to what you want. So, again, what we're trying to do now is see what gets recorded when I'm cycling through all that stuff. So we're back to having everybody across the top, shared screen content here, Let's say I try to spotlight Lego Space Guy. So say somebody else is sharing their screen and you want to actually spotlight a different speaker. So spotlight Lego Space Guy. For now that moved him over here. If I pin Elmo, it's going to remove the spotlights. Okay, and then it does the weird. So pinning just seems to have, to have this weird effect where it will automatically rearrange the view for you. But if I remove those, again, I don't get everybody else back across the top here. I have a button over here to switch to shared content, so that will swap these. And Oh, and that gets me everybody back at the top. Interesting. Okay, didn't quite expect that. So, now, again, here it's calling this standard view, where the thumbnails are across the top and the shared content is large here. You can switch to side-by-side -side view. So you have side-by-side -side speaker and gallery. To the best of my knowledge, this doesn't affect the recording. So in, in when somebody else is sharing their screen, you can go to this side-by-side -side view where you can drag this middle bar to resize things. You can make the shared content really big and the thumbnails really small, or vice versa. I don't think this affects the recording at all, but we will have to see what we wind up with. And right now, I'm in side-by-side -side speaker. I can also go to side-by-side -side gallery, where now I see everybody over here on the right. And again... You can resize these, but I'm pretty sure this does not affect the recording. And yet again, you can cycle through different iterations of pinning and spotlighting people here. So let's say I'm going to go ahead and pin myself. And now if I go back to gallery and say I want to add also pin Elmo, there it automatically jumps me to speaker view whenever I pin somebody. So We'll have to see in the recording if it winds up showing both me and Elmo or just one of us. But again, I'm pretty sure this resizing does not affect what you actually see in the recording. So I'm going to go ahead and stop screen sharing from the laptop. And switch back to my normal gallery view here. Okay, I think I'm back to where I was at the beginning. Nope, remove all pins. Okay, so I think I went through as many possible iterations as I could think of there. We tried rearranging the gallery view. We tried different combinations of pinning and spotlighting. We tried pinning and spotlighting while I was sharing my own screen. Then we tried pinning and spotlighting while somebody else was sharing their screen. And I cycled through full screen, standard, and side-by-side -side views. Again, I'm not going to know what all of that looks like until I stop this recording and look at the Zoom recording. But since you're watching this on YouTube, you're going to get them both side-by-side. -side. You can compare the live recording to the Zoom recording. If there is something I missed or some other combination you would like to see, go ahead and let me know in the comments and I will try to do another video cycling through some of these combinations. So that's it for now. If you had asked me a year ago if I would still be making Zoom tutorials, I probably would have said no, but I think at this point, even if the pandemic goes away, it looks like Zoom is not going anywhere anytime soon. I think people have started to find some aspects of attending online meetings and things like online yoga classes convenient, so I think there will still be a need for Zoom, and I probably will keep making tutorials. So if you have a question, a comment, or a suggestion for another tutorial, that is where I get most of my ideas for new videos at this point, please go ahead and leave a comment below this video. I can't promise I will get to everything, but I will do my best to get back to you. Thank you.